11 crew, what it do? It's your boy 1KM4. Yes, yes, yes. Big 1KM4 in the building. I'm feeling good. I smell good. I don't, I'm so wavy. Mind you, I still haven't put on a do-rag yet. Look. Shout out to all the subs, man. We done hit 1K. Unlimited crew up next. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video. We back, we back. The Life and Death of Drink of the Ruler Part 2. I hope y'all fucked with the first one. I'm recording this one before I even posted the first one because, the bro, it took like four hours to process the fucking video. I forgot it was going to be an hour-long video and it was going to take longer to process. So look, they both going to get posted today. Um, the last one, I was more laid back. Feel me, it was late at night. I was chilling, just got done eating. Like, uh, my stomach was full. Uh, hopefully, this one's as good as the first half because the first half was fucking amazing. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. The Holding of... Draco the ruler. In the end, the district attorney decided to refile charges of criminal gang conspiracy and shooting from a motor vehicle against God damn. Draco, as these counts had originally returned a hung jury. Shooting from a motor vehicle is a crime that could see Draco facing three to seven years in jail, but with the gang enhancement that criminal gang conspiracy charge, Draco was once again facing life in prison, even though he'd been fully acquitted on those original murder and They hated charges. this nigga, bro. It was a dirty move by prosecutors who were essentially holding Draco in custody for a crime he had already been acquitted of. If the jury had already found him innocent of murder and attempted murder, it was quite the stretch to suggest that he had still shot from a car and been involved in the conspiracy, but clearly the prosecutors had a grudge against Draco after losing in court over the main charges. And of course, if keeping Draco in prison after he was acquitted wasn't enough, prosecutors also made sure that during this time, Draco was still held in solitary confinement. But somehow this didn't stop Draco from still managing to get access to a phone and tweeting about his case, with Draco taken to the net in September 2019, telling the world that he was essentially being charged for the same crime that he got acquitted for a few months previous saying enough is enough and acknowledging he knows detectives are just trying to get justice for the yo the but god got the last say so we know the truth hey I, i'm guessing that's where we know the truth shit came from if that's the case that's just cool as fuck that's the coolest shit i ever heard look bro niggas was dicky and they really did not like Draco at all, bro. They wanted to hold him down. Family, they was treating him like John Gotti. His conviction would mean something to prosecutors. It didn't. And the cops would do everything they could to keep Draco in jail after his acquittal, with Draco's lawyer later telling No Jumper in an interview that he believed that the cops... I keep fucking yelling. Draco as a trophy. It's a trophy. He's a trophy... You know, a big, a big fish for for them to try to take down. Because you know they're humiliated because they didn't get them the first time. That's around, yeah, they like, definitely oh, were. The feds down. don't play that. They really, go for this again. Draco's new trial was set for August in 2020, meaning that he would have been in jail for over a year following his acquittal for murder. It's truly crazy when you think about it. But fortunately, in the end, after so much bad luck and an additional Damn. year sat in jail unjustly, Draco would finally catch a break as the L.A. County District Attorney who had had a vendetta against Draco, Jackie Lacey, would end up losing her job, partly the result of a terrible track record, refusing to prosecute a number of police shootings as well as Harvey Weinstein, along with her own husband even catching headlines for threatening to shoot and kill. No! So in November 2020, a new District Attorney would be on the scene, potentially looking to save face... Wait, so you're telling me the only reason, the only reason he got out of jail in a somewhat timely manner is because the lady had to get voted out. So you're telling me if she didn't get voted out, there's a possibility because because this like when when you watch old like life and deaths and shit, it, it, it seems like it was dumb long ago. This was really like two, three, four or five years ago. Tops. He, he'd still possibly be in jail for some shit he didn't do. Come on, bro. We know the truth. We know the truth. Yeah. Draco, talk to him, bro. We know the truth. Change of administration, Draco the ruler ended up being offered a plea deal from the new DA who dropped the original gang conspiracy charge. Looking frail, ain't I? Facing life, need to eat a little bit. A guilty plea for shooting from a motor vehicle, a crime that he continued to deny, saying that he was essentially forced to plead guilty for a crime he did not do just to get out of prison. So you took a plea deal for a crime you didn't commit? Basically. Like everyone else that takes crimes, plea deals with crimes they didn't commit, take gang enhancements, take stuff. So after a that's crazy, bro. Years that's crazy. For his life in jail and quite literally beating the death penalty, Draco would finally be a free man again. But hell, on these dangerous LA streets, even being free wouldn't be easy. Because upon his release, Draco the Ruler would be returning to a snake. God damn! Yeah, that nigga Icy Hey, guy, he got that 20 piece on. That's what it is. He got that 20 piece. The LA rap scene that he had left behind all those big ass hoops. With Draco's former enemies building strength, 
and new alliances while he was behind bars. Meaning that when Draco was released, he would have to fight for dominance in the rap game once again. And considering just how dangerous LA's street rap scene is, he'd be risking his life every step of the way. Oh, really? I spent hours. Draco's up, rise to power. This is what I need to hear. This is what I need to know about. Other LA rappers are competing for the space he used to occupy. Type shit. For example, AZ Trike. The rapper, hailing from South Central, had picked up some steam with his track Burn Rubber again releasing September the 7th, 2017. He'd collaborate with an Inglewood rapper who Draco wasn't very fond of by the name of Frosty the Snowman on the track One Up. Draco had been having issues with Frosty even before his time in jail. They'd previously been in the studio together on good terms, but eventually started beefing, with Draco revealing in a 2017 No Jumper interview that he'd made a post mocking people for driving off old Mercedes with Frosty apparently taking offense. He was in the studio talking about, well, we all should have said this. Should I say it like this? Should, I, should I do it like this? I like when I put the post up, I put niggas be posting <laughs> old six benzes, New York idolized the old six benzes. They all tag Frosty. I didn't tag the <laughs> Frosty had had <laughs> Draco's a troll. And would later have a resurgence with his music blowing up on TikTok. Robbie, should I do it like this? I'm TikTok. fucking crazy. Frosty That's crazy. Views on his original songs, more on TikTok remixes, and hundreds of thousands of videos being made to his music. Also big from Inglewood is a rapper by the name of Rucci, who also linked up with AZ Chike on the collab track Light It Up, with Rucci and AZ Chike going on to be regular collaborators. In fact, Frosty the Snowman, you dig? I feel like I heard that before. Did that shit blow up in like 20, like 17, 18? Hold on. Get all right, get these bands, we gonna stand a little bit. So I am a little hip. I, I did know that song. I did know that song. Respectfully, I did know that song. In fact, they would go on to collaborate with another Inglewood regular by the name of Lil Deuce with their track Every N-Word. Then there's also the likes of Mozzie, who had previously worked with Draco on tracks like Fresh Out of Jail. But while Draco had gone back into jail, Mozzie was making songs with Inglewood natives like Rucci, for example, the track Believe In Me, and Mozzie would eventually go on to make an entire album with YG called Community Service. And though YG isn't from Inglewood, he probably is the most prominent person in the LA music scene to have a grudge against Draco. Basically, wow. if you're an LA rapper with any kind of ties or friends in Inglewood, you and Draco probably aren't gonna get along. And with Draco now finally getting out of jail. Did I miss it? Why does YG not fuck with Draco? I think I missed that. It might've been over here. I don't know why YG doesn't fuck Cole with Draco. To evolve, reignite, and get cracking once again. With the sad truth being, after narrowly escaping the death penalty and life in prison, with his newfound freedom, Draco's life would be in danger more than ever. Them niggas was lit, boy. The return of Draco the Ruler. Locked up, Draco didn't give up on his rap game aspirations. He continued dropping music recorded from the phone in jail, and his thank you for using GTL mixtape released in June 2020, nearly a year after Draco's acquittal on those murder charges. This was a mixtape which Pitchfork labeled as the best of Draco's career and the best prison rap album ever recorded. But those crackly verses reported over a jailhouse phone could only satisfy- Y'all told me to react to that. And eventually- I might have to. finally be over as Draco the Ruler is released I might have to album review that. Let me know if you if you're watching this part right now. Let me know in the comments. I'll album review that. Prison on November the fifth, twenty twenty. With Draco being seen celebrating with his family in the car driving home. Get his ugly ass. My nephew, he ah. Nephew. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Or I wasn't finna get out. What happened? <laughs> yeah. A couple of days after he the past, on November the he looked 7th, like he was going home on graduation. 2020, Draco goes on a big IG live rant getting three years of raw emotions off of his chest. He said that when he Got was to. facing the death penalty, no one in the LA scene stuck up for him because he was taking their shine. But now he's back, there is no way he's falling off again. Seen the police was doing me foul, bro. I was fighting a DP, bro. Didn't nobody open up their mouth to say nothing because of they hate for me, bro. That, 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 that I was gonna take they shine, bro. And I still got out anyway, bitch. Nigga. You, you sit here and watch my fucking live. Go pillow talk on the nigga and y'all can't stop nothing. You know why? Cause nigga still gonna listen to my shit, you weird ass. All I'm gonna do Facts. is keep spending this money, nigga. And, and if y'all be speculating, Watching my shit every day, my stacks don't get no smaller. They've been getting larger, family. That gonna fall off, not me, buddy. I don't do that. I don't fall off, buddy. When I first got out, 
I came out with a bundle. I remember every call that wasn't accepted, nigga. Keep that same energy, bitch ass. I'm the reason that was able to feed they motherfucking kids while I was in jail. Yeah. Was stealing my mother's yeah. And getting on off that shit. Yeah. Bitch. These niggas try to beat me so much, bro. They start having the attitude like they really me. I've been holding this shit in for three years, bro. These is weirdos, bro. How many, how many out of all these that Nick seen out here, bro, that was rapping like a doing all this shit, bro? Did y'all see post me when I got out? All I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, bitch ass rap, stay out my way, nigga. Cause soon as you think like, oh damn, that tape gonna fly out, I'm gonna drop another one. Then I'm gonna drop another one. I'm not, nigga, I'm the realest rapper from LA, mother. Hey, me. that's Draco Unlimited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Draco Unlimited. He got unlimited music. Name Hell rapper, yeah. I was out here, nigga, that nigga beat some shit I beat. Gangsta. Please tell me. Favorite rapper, nigga, ain't never even been to jail for the shit I've been to jail for. Nigga. Oh my can't God. No, can't no LA rapper nigga, that's out here mainstream say he beat a murder, attempted murder, five attempted murders, and a DP. Drake Bro. Was getting heated on this rant and even ended up comparing Harvey his case to works, the Louisiana boy. rap legend Lil Boosie's case suggesting that Draco beat bigger charges. And Lil Boosie had one murder. I had a murder, five attempted murder, and a conspiracy. I got Lil Boosie beat. Wrong with me. At a certain point, Draco begun to ponder whether or not his ops were snitches. He, he do. They have guns in their videos, but never seen to jail. But you want to be politicking on me. You probably would have told. Let's hear about <laughs> these have guns in their videos. Be big rags and all that, bro. All that just super gang members got toolies all the time and all that. Why did not these ever come to jail? Mm. It's talent. That's why these was talent. No. Just wanted to out the way. Them dropping dimes, talking to the police. But more important than dunking on the ops was feeding the fans, who were much more interested in Draco returning to the booth than settling scores with old enemies. And Draco would eventually return to the music scene with a bang on the 9th of November 2020, releasing his first music video for the song Fights Don't Matter. A song all about shooting your ops 33 times, because fights don't matter when you can kill your enemy with a gun. The video- That's a crazy fucking title. That's a crazy title, bro. Fights don't matter. Fifty thousand views on its first day. Fights point, don't Draco matter. His rap career was back in full swing, and naturally, it didn't take long for his competitive streak to come out. Draco would go live again on November the thirteenth, dissing Frosty, saying he's not on Draco's level. Frosty is not on my level. He doesn't have no money. Money. He's not on my level. Then, on November the sixteenth, twenty twenty, Draco, fresh out of jail, appears for his first extended interview on the No Jumper podcast. It was good to see Draco free and speaking openly again, but it was abundantly clear just how much pain and suffering he'd been through during his incarceration. He told Adam that he was in solitary for around 18 months and was traumatized by the sound of the door locking behind him. But yeah, I was there for a long time. I was in the worst place you could be in there. Right. 2904, solitary confinement. Shit is crazy. What, what's it like being in there for, for months? Like, what does it do to your, to your brain? I mean, it's just fuck you up. Mentally, psychologically, everything like I don't know. It's hard. It'd be hard to like trust me. I'd be like, I don't know. I still kind of be like that. Like I can't even hear a door close without me turning my head. Like, Draco would also have some choice words for his ops during this interview, saying everybody is mad that he's not still in jail and that they're scared of him. But but you name names at a certain point. And you were really yeah, making do, it clear that you didn't. Yeah, I don't. Get, I mean, I, I would be too. Like, I'm out now, so right. they, they, they didn't You know this nigga's getting all the clout, all the money, all the hoes, all the all the like nigga got unlimited music. They're like, damn, this nigga's out of jail taking over the streets. Like the fuck is we supposed to do, bro? You feel like it's like that that not only are you not getting support from other rappers, nah, I'm LA, but that they also that they would rather see you. They would rather see me there. Right. Because they know. Look, that's look crazy. What's going on now. The yeah, that's crazy. Me. You ain't seen nobody post nothing. Ain't nobody drop no songs. Come on, bro. They know. This is what they didn't want. These motherfuckers are scared of me, bro. <laughs> when asked about how he feels about people wanting to hurt him, he says he's not scared and that it's been four years now, they should get over it. What is your attitude on people who want to do something to you at this point out here in the streets? It's like it's been four years, bro, get over it. Like, that's how I feel. But thankfully, Draco did end the interview with something sensible, saying he no longer wants to go around hanging out in the hood because nothing good could come of it. There ain't no reason for me to keep coming anyway. It's not nothing over there, but 
Like, I, I, there's nothing over there but trouble. Facts. It was good news that Draco was Facts. out of jail, seemingly focused on staying out of trouble and moving forward positively. And of course, the most important thing when it comes to staying out of the streets is staying in the studio. And so, after spending a couple of years only able to release songs recorded over a prison phone, on the 1st of September 2020, Draco finally dropped his latest mixtape, We Know The Truth, his first studio release since getting out of jail we know the truth. murder charges. The project had the track 20 Pieces, we, re we reacted to that. celebrates beating his charges whilst bragging of having a grand total of 20 chains around his neck, with Draco rapping the defiant lyric, all 12 jurors not guilty. Nigga beat, beat it. it. <laughs> Beginning Draco's ongoing trend of using lyrics in his songs to brag about having convinced all 12 jurors of his innocence at his trial. There wasn't a great deal of remorse or sensitivity on the project. Elsewhere on there, Draco raps about Randy mossing a body and feeling like John Gotti after beating the charges. He is John Gotti, hey. This project was Draco's triumph from I said that. the game and his victory lap after beating the supposed body. And with these celebrations, lyrics in mind, it's no surprise that Draco's enemies weren't really feeling this project. In response to Draco's new release, a post would begin to circulate on social media saying that Draco's music is banned from being played in the city of Inglewood. The post says that if you're caught playing Draco's music from your car in Inglewood, you're gonna get pulled out of it like Grand Theft Auto. This post prompted defiant Dra Draco the Fruity? Why? You're going to get pulled out of like Grand Theft Auto. This post prompted defiant Draco fans to drive into the heart of Inglewood playing his music, something which Draco himself was eager to repost. But the issues didn't Gangster. stop there. Draco's ops were ready to get at him on records too. And soon AZ Trike would drop his new diss track, Clear the Air, aka Welcome Home, aimed at Draco. The song was a lyrical warning shot to Draco where he disses the Stink Team, saying he doesn't rap anything like Draco, and acknowledging Draco dissing him in his IG lives. It was clear that Draco's return to the rap game wasn't going to please everyone, but he would continue pushing his career forward regardless. Spent the niggas really was here. Doing interviews to promote his new project. On the 5th, Draco would appear on Vlad TV, retelling the insane story of his come up and his time in jail. Then after that, on December the 9th, he did the Break Check podcast with Andrew Callahan, telling Andrew that he doesn't feel he gets a lot of love since he got out of jail. I didn't think it was going to be like this. Like, I thought it would have been like more love from people. Apparently, yeah. they feel like I'm going to take their spot, so. A lot of people here like, hey, That's you know, fucked man. up. That sucks, man. He also told Andrew that his time in jail made him never want to go back. Dude. So I really understand why he was he talks like how he does. Cause that's that's fucked up, bro. That's like cause you we all kinda not we don't know what it feels like, but you ever go to sleep and then you wake up and there ain't no notifications on your phone? Imagine going to jail for three years, coming out, no notifications on your phone. Nigga, I would be hot. Oh, I would be hot. But you trying to tell me there's no notifications on my phone, but I got a million dollars in my bank. I'm talking to, bro, the shit I would be talking and for the ruler. That's what niggas would have to call me. I, like I would talk crazy. To this day, I, like I would talk spend, crazy. Man. Yeah, for sure. Because I always think every day. I mean, it kind of helps me, though, because every day I think, like, I never want to go back to jail. Ever. I never want to go through this again. Mm -hmm. So anytime I, like, drift off and, and think about, like, doing something that potentially make me go to jail, I always think, like, that's not where I want to go. Like, that's not where I want to be. I can't even. I, so I've been up for two day, two weeks straight. I haven't been able to sleep because every day I've been thinking like, man, damn, I'm really out. Damn, I can't go back to jail. I can't do this. He also said ominously that he believes that people are after him at all times. I can't even play like that anyway because people, people want to get me. You know, people are out to get me. Police, regular people. So I can't even be slipping like that to where somebody catch me like. You got a lot of people. Right? Draco would certainly have to look over his shoulder That's how you gotta to continue move. to navigate the dangerous world of like that and I'm poor. rap politics. But lucky for Draco, while the ops in his city were hating on him, some of the biggest names in the rap game were loving his music. As on the 19th of December, Draco would tease a new song featuring the biggest rapper who has ever lived, Drake, along with a caption telling his ops that he's on a whole different level to them. Draco revealed that his collaboration with Drake was set to appear on his next full-length project, The Truth Hurts, before going on a furious rant at everybody who saw Switched on him while he was in jail. I'm sorry, I'm making up. Remember that. Wait, when the fuck did he get a song with Drake? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Niggas didn't tell me this. Hold on. Niggas wasn't gonna tell me that was Drake. Uh, Drake on that song. Niggas was niggas wasn't gonna tell me that was Draco on that song. Are you serious? That was bro. That song with Drake and Draco. That was literally talk to me. That was literally like my my most played song for that year. I didn't even put two and two together. Nah, this nigga's the goat, bro. Yo, he's the goat, bro. Draco's the goat, bro. Switched up on me. You know, hey, all this clown ass shit. Remember though, nobody went to 
when I was in jail. Literally. Nobody wants to do none of this. Everybody gonna be trying to hit me up now. And that's cool and all that. But I'm not with you. Remember that, bro. I've been I'm not, bro. I've been I've been getting money. I've been doing shit, bro. I am a bro. Remember that. Not so when get to sitting here, sitting at home, thinking that, oh, maybe y'all could and maybe y'all on the same level with me, y'all not. You're not, Period. you're not. Clearly Draco was lining up some big moves and planning to dunk on everyone who didn't believe in him or who wasn't I there. mean, a Drake feature, he did. And moving on from the people who let him down in the past, he was also expanding his team and putting new people on. He'd pop up with a verse on the Ruth's Chris freestyle with new Stink Team member Remble on December the 23rd, 2020. What happened Draco's between Remble and Draco? Extremely provocative towards his rivals. Draco would rap on the song telling his ops to quite literally come and find him if they want him. He and invites his ops to hop off Twitter and come and shoot him in real life, followed by him bragging that he hangs around with real killers. He says that the Stink Team members go for celebratory meals at Ruth's Chris every time they kill a new op. Bro, that's so disrespectful. And the song with his latest offensive catchphrase towards his ops, he's never coming back and that's that. Draco was really- well Most disrespectful thing I've ever heard in any rap song. And now that I know that he's talking about cuz from over here, now that I know he's talking about cuz from over here, bro, Where that's his body beating. That's the most disrespectful bar I've Even ever heard. The official version of the story suggested Draco had nothing to do with the killing that landed him in jail. No doubt many of these lyrics would have offended Draco's ops and had them looking to cause him harm. And it seemed that over the course of 2021, Draco would get much more dark, spending the majority of his time focusing on old feuds and provoking enemies, parading his gang affiliations and criminal background in his lyrics and on social media. Most notably was in January 2021, when Draco went live on Instagram Instagram with Kells, who was still in prison after being sentenced to life for the murder of Red Bull. All while fans piled into the comments saying, free Kells. They know what the f going on. They know what's going on. They can't take it though. Like, you can't take it. It was hurting their head. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Try it if you want to. Yeah. I ain't got nothing to lose. Yeah. Okay. No gang. Nothing they can say. It's nothing they can say, bro. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah, they should have been in that courtroom then. Yeah, it's when we was right there facing an electric chair. It's so hot. When we were facing an electric chair on the dead armies. Yeah, your whole family doing backflips. Well, tell your mama do a backflip. <laughs> the same month he went live with Red Bull's Killer, Draco would also drop the music video for Mr. That's just crazy. Back, a song once again featuring that controversial lyric, he's never coming back and that's that. As well as a menacing outro where Draco repeats that line, and tells whoever's listening, face it, bruh, like you can sit there moping around sitting on the couch. I know you're going through some shit though, but just just face it, bruh, like he's never coming back and that's that. You hear me? <laughs> what? Like he's really doing the most to get a rise out of his ops. What? What? I need to react to that. His enemies weren't pushing their musical careers forward either. Because around this time, other rappers with ties to oh my are making God. big moves too. Like Lil Deuce, who dropped his track Outside, a tiny young freestyle, in February 2021, which went on to rack up over a million views. That track oh, coming shit. along with a music video showcasing an army of people who Draco has issues with. Just over a week after that song dropped, on February the 11th, Draco would go live talking on his ops being fake and staying solid in prison. Come out here and I'm good along with me. And then be trying to pull that cord like you do whatever you want to. No, like I like forgot. Yeah, like they didn't find ten choppers in my house. Like I'm not, you know, fighting the DP. You niggas is rap, and you might be a little bit in the street, but y'all not like that. We really like that. Ops is ops. My ops is other ops. And all that. Why ain't nobody touch me in prison? Why ain't nobody touch me? Yeah, cause niggas know better. Man. Gangsta. They looking for me. No, can't be looking for me because I hang out every day. Every day. Every day. You be like, damn, bro, why you be hanging out like that all day, bro? You need to go in the house. Because nobody's in there going to do nothing. Then on February 24th, 2021, Draco would drop his new project, the much anticipated The Truth Hurts mixtape, featuring a cover where Draco stood in front of his beloved Rolls Royce that shit's tough. holding one of the umbrellas that the car famously comes with. The project also featured the track Talk To Me featuring Drake, which despite not getting a music video, went on to become Draco's that most shit, played song hey. on Spotify, racking up a whopping 41 million spins. That song is The project hey. also included the song Pow Right in the Kisser, which did get a music video and saw Draco and the whole stink team goading the I reacted to that. Go check that out. This shit's a fucking bop. They're this is a bop. Incredibly That's a bop. Lyrics. Draco says pow right in the kisser every few seconds of the track whilst him and other stink team members rap offensive disses to their ops 
trying to cause as much offence as possible before Draco jumps in with the ad-lib, power writing the kisser. On the song, Draco also brought back his disrespectful catchphrase, he's never coming back and that's that, as well as a long outro where Draco once again tells his ops to get over it, saying all this stuff happened three years ago and they need to let go of this grudge. Draco was really going hard to pile disrespect onto his ops during this nigga was but at this bugging. point in his career, I mean, he's collaborating with Drake, the most successful mainstream rap artist to ever live. He really didn't need to be mocking his ops at every opportunity and putting the target on his back. Perhaps Draco was too street to transition into the music industry Ooh. fully, or perhaps all those years in solitary confinement just changed him. Because he seemed to come out of jail with a lifelong grudge against his ops that he simply couldn't move on from. But whatever it was, Draco just seemed incapable of letting the past be the past and leaving his beats in the streets. And over the course of 2021, Draco would spiral deeper and deeper into his feuds with gang-affiliated LA rappers. With this feud being made much worse by the tragic and unrelated passing of one of Draco's closest friends, which naturally the ops would be mocked at every opportunity. Would y'all clarify this as crashing out? Do y'all think that counts as crashing out? Doing what doing what Draco was doing? Because obviously he didn't like go and shoot nobody. Like he didn't go and fucking take no one's life away or nothing like that. But does that still count as crashing out? Just dissing them when you already know you got more money, more hoes, more, more bread than them? I don't know. Let me know. On February the That's 16th, a Naruto shit. Stink Team Rapper That's tough. The Great dies after being hit by a car in a freak accident on Pacific Coast Highway. No. Pacific Coast Highway of Pacific Palisades has reopened this morning after a deadly crash there. A person was fatally struck by a vehicle in the area of PCH in Portland. What are the Marine odds of that? Shortly before 11 o'clock last night, Sky 2 was over the investigation outside of the closed restaurant Sidewalk Cafe. One car involved in the crash drove off the road and <clears> onto the beach. The identity of the victim has not been released. Draco mourned the loss of his close friend and collaborator on Twitter, as did many other titans of the rap media game. But soon Draco would take to IG Live to make sure the world knew that Ketchy's death was an accident unrelated to the ongoing beef. You got hit by a car, bro. But you know how these gonna get, yeah. No, no, that didn't happen, bro. That didn't happen, bro. It's yeah, that's fucked up. Bro. On the shit, bro. You got hit by a car about some pedestrian. Nah, you know they finna start, though. Finna be popping it like doing something something that didn't happen you know how these be you want to claim bodies that they ain't do and it seemed as if draco was right because soon after this the likes of little deuce was on twitter celebrating ketchy's death even going as far as to drop his name waited no time for anybody looking for him after those tweets they draco waited no would time back on twitter calling anybody disrespecting ketchy a homophobic slur as well as going on ig saying that anybody that's cool with inglewood is a target for his team even if they're not from la any dude who hang with him, if you from out of town, you hang with him, you getting chipped to a nigga, straight up, all that plan shit. I just talked about this shit the other day, bro. It's talking about, I don't be tripping off coming out here and niggas, with niggas I don't, but I don't give a f where you from. I don't give a f if you're from Alaska, none of that shit. You f with f you getting chipped. I don't care where you from, Texas, any of that shit. You could be from the Bay, Sacramento, you come out here, you f these f is, and you getting chipped. Despite the devastating death of Ketchy, Draco would go on to have a successful rollout that month of his Truth Hurts mixtape and his Drake collaboration. But things would heat up once again on March the 8th, 2021, when No Jumper released a new interview with YG, where he introduces members of his 400 record label. And during the interview, YG appeared to have a few choice words for Draco without naming him specifically, explaining that his crew don't do rap beefs, and saying that if they're in a street beef, it's for real, and his goons are really gonna get you. I'm not finna be going out there doing no rap this and shit cause like if it's smoke it's really smoke with us we ain't playing all that rap beef and all that shit we don't we not rap beefing we really beefing hmm. the homies gonna get you this appeared to be a bold threat and naturally it didn't take Draco long to clap back Three days later, on March the 11th, 2021, Draco reacts to Adam22 doing the YG interview by previewing a song on IG Live, with lyrics that say a rapper will get Swiss cheesed, i.e. shot, if he does one more thing, I assume referring to YG. Draco also goes Why on he? to post numerous IG stories referring to YG directly, reposting a story that YG put up, congratulating Bobby Schmurder for getting out of jail, with a caption saying people will congratulate somebody getting out of jail 
from out of town, but hate when somebody gets out of jail in their own city. Draco would then suggest that he wasn't the only person who'd realised this, then posting that he's happy that Bobby got out of jail, before absurdly suggesting that the stink team had started a trend of people getting out of jail. Draco would then turn his attention back to YG, saying that he's not going to let someone acting tough stop him from progressing his career, suggesting that YG didn't help the up-and-comers in LA with their careers, so now Draco's got to do it. Draco then tells YG publicly to unfollow him on Instagram, sort of a humble brag to let the world know that YG is still following him. A week after that, Draco goes live on Instagram, dissing YG again as well as Ooh, Snoop Dogg shit. and Boosie for not being independent and not beating charges as bad as the ones he beat. I That's a crazy like, flex. Just keep tagging all, all that. First of all, just keep saying all this. Oh, what about Kenny? What about uh, YG? Not independent. What about Snoop Dogg? He beat a murder, not the death penalty. What about this? What about Lil Boosie? He beat one murder. I beat one murder. Tense nigga. Conspiracy. Yeah. Ain't get no money from that <laughs> They threw the I house at this nigga. Fucking scary. They want to break it down when I see him. They threw the house you know out of him. Shit opened up in April. So all that tough ass shit. See me. Gangsta. You know what it is. Like they don't see the gangsta in a Maybach, nigga. I'm riding around LA. Grow with you. Clearly Draco was eager to disrespect his ops, but after the loss of his close friend Ketchy the Great, his enemies wanted to do the same thing right back to him. The following month on April the 9th, 2021, Inglewood affiliated rapper Ice Water Rock drops a Draco and Ketchy diss song called Ketchy Pack, a song primarily focused on mocking Ketchy the Great's death and showing utmost disrespect by driving over tomato ketchup packets in his lowrider and stealing That's crazy. On the ground. But while the ops were going low, Draco was going high. That's OD. Because a week after that incredibly disrespectful catchy diss song dropped, Draco went mainstream, with his feature on Saweetie's song Risky releasing, giving Draco the chance to showcase his talent to a much That's the best way to get back. That's the best way to get back. To make some money on. Niggas can diss all they want. When you're making the money on, who's winning? Who's winning? You know what I mean? Mainstream pop audience. Sadly, Draco's style wasn't necessarily what the mainstream was looking for, with many commenters not entirely happy with Draco's performance on the track. But that didn't matter. Because wasn't fucking Draco with Draco? Was an independent artist, and the last thing he cared about was impressing a mainstream audience. And so three days after that, he would go on to drop a much more independent release, a collab album with his brother Ralphie the Plug. Oh yeah. A cold day in hell. Fuck them niggas. More disrespectful songs aimed at his ops like Just Retire, where he says, "I'm the reason that all your homies are dying." The only way I see us having it is my way. He's never coming back and that's that, just retire. Then on May the 6th, the long live the greatest music video drops, where we see Draco paying his respects to Ketchy, with the music video showing Ketchy's funeral in great detail, along with documentary footage of the Stink team attending the ceremony. From here, Draco would continue to be active in the rap scene making big moves, being seen on May the 13th, 2021, hanging out with Drake after the successful release of their collab. Yeah. My big dog. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if what we Drake. have yeah. is love, yeah. but it's on my mind. We that might is, I don't think it's yeah. inside yeah. this club. Yeah. Girl, close yeah. your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Then on May the 22nd, that shit goes hard, boy. On social media playing a Frosty song and celebrating him being out of jail, I assume doing what YG was supposed to do. Ultimately, Draco's Damn. fake positive. He just wanted some love, bro. And soon, some of Draco's enemies would end up doing something so offensive they would offend the whole of Los Angeles. What? At the end of May 2021, another How could you offend the whole Los Angeles? Who was known to socialize with Frosty by the name of Baby Capone Baby would Capone. deface the mural of Nipsey Hussle outside of his marathon clothing store. Where deface it? What? Oh no, there's not enough money in the world I can get me to do that shit, bro. That's so That's fucked up, bro. Cause you not only bro, you disrespecting Nipsey, you disrespecting his family, you disrespecting the artist that painted this bro. Niggas just don't have no remorse, bro. And that's your problem. Niggas don't have no no consideration. That's that's just weird. Lost his life, that's some weird shit, bro. IFGB and his own that's some weird shit, bro. Nipsey's face. Much to the disappointment of locals with the utmost love and respect for Nipsey. That's weird as fuck. Capone, huh? God. Capone. Yeah. And then he put his name on it. Yeah. That's fucked up. After the incident, Capone would go live with another blood from his hood by the name of Indian Red Boy, laughing about the incident, dissing other hoods, and claiming to be 6 OK or rolling 60s killers. Yeah, you know what's going on, yeah. dead on me. Shit get wicked, boy. Shit get wicked. Stop playing with us, bitch. 
Not long after this went down, Draco himself would come out to diss Baby Capone and the whole of Inglewood telling the world that these are the people that he's beefing with. These are the people that don't like me, bro. These are the people that don't like me. These, these are the type of people that they are. Oh, I'm a rude you just over exaggerating. All right, now you see. The same I've been telling these hoes. I've been telling bro. Now you wanna what we wanna wait for now? You wanna wait till cross Nipsey face out and do all this on the wall? That these hoes, I've been saying this from the jump. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, look stupid as a now. These, That's plus one million, million fans for Draco. For Draco. Oh, that good to go against me. Then on June the 1st, Draco goes live telling his followers that his ops don't last long and that they should check the scoreboard. They don't make it too long, bro. They either end up dying <laughs> or like catching some or like dying. A nigga yelling scoreboard referring to your friends dying is fucking crazy. This nigga had no chill. Draco had no chill. He had no chill. This nigga was devious. Draco clearly had the ops in Inglewood on his mind during this period. On no, June 11, he goes live no. on IG once again, this time with a pinned comment saying who wants to fight Draco from Inglewood. And during that live, Draco says he never lost a fight in jail, going on to say the Stinks beat up Inglewood in prison, even Red Bull specifically. Inglewood <laughs> versus Stink Team? Yeah, we know that. No win. Dead homie. Beat the shot. <laughs> yeah, every in the county jail. Just rap shit on it. Dead homies. We, yeah. County jail, no wins on none of them. Nigga said no wins. No wins. Yeah, catch up, Mel. Slap hang out. My brother, my brother knocked Jay Bird out. Yeah, what? Red Bull beat his ass. Talking about Seven Flame beat his ass. Dead um. Yeah, no wins. Man, right, you niggas. Axe. You niggas supposed to be in there reforming, reading books and, and, and rhymes and working out and shit. You niggas in there playing WWE. Bro, Fights in the county jail, no wins. How dead wrong with y'all, bro? Shit out of solo on a damn, no wins. Oh, none at home. The ketchup beat the shit out. No good. Black eyes couldn't even open his eyes. Damn. Ask that don't get a, that don't get along with they steal blood. Ask them the real stories. Dead home. No wins on none of my home. Draco goes on to say that he's even going to beat up his ops and their security at Rolling Loud, and that he loves fighting so much he doesn't need a gun. Let, let's see if we got all that tough shit. And we I never, I, I would never like fighting that much. Beat the shit out. We we come to jail. Y'all don't come to jail. Dead homie fighting is nothing. So we gonna see when it's rolling. I don't even think John Jones no likes fighting that much. No guns. Beat the shit out of y'all and y'all security. Why we even talking about fighting? Fighting is fighting is fun though. But now nah, we ain't doing no fighting. No guns. Unless we get paid. We can get paid. We can get paid out the fight. Yeah, I get paid just I'll a little bit. I <laughs> should do. EF Ultimate Break. The best way to see the world. You love ads, don't they? 18 to 35. Draco goes on to say that he will knock out AZ Chuck and that when his ult beat damn. him, their OGs get so scared they have to warn everybody that the stink team might actually pull up to their hood and shoot people. Why he even comment on Ralphie shit on a dead homie? He gonna go to his nose fat too. Bro, he gonna go to Chike, bro. Chike, bro, he's gonna go to sleep the first two seconds. Dead homie. That's why he's quiet when he popping that shit. He be in the background like, hey, bro, don't do that, bro. I'm gonna really come over here and shoot one of them homies in the face. Dead homie. Despite being out of jail for months at this point, Draco still seemed obsessed with jailhouse politics. Going live again around eight days later on June the 19th, alongside Ralphie, speaking publicly on fights that they had with Inglewood members whilst in jail. That guy in the ring with me left out bad. No cap. Never Since I was like 11 out. years old, that guy in the ring with me left out bad. They don't, they don't, they don't like bringing up that part. Ralph was gay bird. He was asleep. Oh yeah, went to sleep in the cell. He thought they're he on IG like, Live talking crazy. He got up in the ring and said, Ooh. "Oh, what? Yeah, red bull." They don't like. They don't. They don't like to tell the stories how their homies got their ass beat. They got too many. All victorious victories. Beat the shit out of Solo. What? Draco then begins to tell everybody that AZ Chike apparently only joined the Bloods at age 25. Cause you gay, man, you a bitch. Bitch. You don't want to tell this bitch you got put on at 25. 25 is crazy. A few days later on June the 23rd, 2021, Draco goes live again, bragging about the assortment of cars that he brought when he got out of jail. You see how I came, as soon as he get out, 
Double R, Range Rover, S550. Stop playing with me. I'm not the one to play with. Just hated that I was in jail. The real is out of jail now. Y'all got some to compete with. Yeah, homie. He went on to taunt his ops, telling them that he's outside and that they shouldn't even think about pulling up on him. Outside. Where you say I don't be at? I'm always outside. Who was that? It's a outside. Nah, he's. They like man, that bitch ass. He's, he's right asking them niggas to pull up, bro. That's crazy. I know where we know where you at. Go pull up on him. Don't think about it. Clearly, there was a lot of danger lurking in these LA streets, and it wouldn't be long until another person lost their life. Because on July the 8th, Indian Red Boy, the blood who had been seen on IG Live with Capone after defacing Nipsey Hussle's mural, would be murdered in the most shocking way. Being shot dead whilst on IG Live with Capone himself, quite literally being shot up on camera and dying in front of all of his followers. That footage is still circulating, but is far too violent to show you on YouTube. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna go find it. I'm gonna go watch it right quick. One second. Yeah, you niggas are too devious for me. Street hey, niggas is respect. too devious for me. In between the death, disses, and destruction, that's fucking Drake crazy. Still finding the time to drop off fire music. His next album, Ain't That the Truth, will drop on July the 23rd. The project containing possibly my favorite Draco song, Flu Flammer Op, a certified banger. I'm reacting Draco to that next. Best, came with a music video that dropped later that month, where Draco once again showed off his beloved Rolls Royce door. I'm reacting to that before this video comes out. Watch, watch. Watch. On extensively. And on that song, Ralphie the Plug has some eyebrow raising lyrics, seeming to take responsibility for the murder where he says, What's he say? What's he say? Dead if you put your hands on this jewelry, all 12 said not guilty, you heard the jury. Draco That's a would bar? also appear to That's reference Indian Red Boy's graphic murder on IG Live in lyrics from the mixtape's opening track, Just Dance, where Draco raps, Since they like Instagram so much, they gon' die on it. 223 shells rocking in his head while he live streaming. So while Draco was dropping some of the best music of his career, it was coming out to a backdrop of escalating LA violence. On August the 10th, 2021, Inglewood members were targeted in a shooting where a car carrying Frosty and one of his friends was shot up and hit multiple times crashing, with Frosty being hit and surviving, but his friend ultimately losing his life. They were it's trying to fucking genocide niggas! Inglewood, where police are investigating a double shooting. There was a, a shooting here, two people sent to the hospital in critical condition, off to a, a local trauma center, and you see this car that crashed. Looks like it's involved in the crash. It's unclear if the people inside were shot or if that's a suspect vehicle. We don't have any information about a, a suspect being in custody, but two people uh, had to be transported to the hospital. Pretty serious shooting here with uh, La Brea shut down. Frosty would even go live following the shooting, still wearing all of his chains and continuing to gangbang on camera from the back of the ambulance. That's crazy, bro. From the dead homies, I know what the f going on. I feel like is that gangster? Bitch on flaming. New music coming soon. Watch out for that. Go follow me on Snowgirt TV. Bro, oh, I already know the paramedics is is just looking at this nigga like, what are you doing? You just like, what are you doing? That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Nothing in my arm. I'm ready. To that hit. that's nigga tree at an all time high. Tatted. Dead homie, my whole shit now. Oh, they had to make me a. Uh, a hand thing so I can Bro, this is some shit off of Boondocks. The on F Street is bad. No wheelchair for me on the hood. You know, I'm gonna purchase me some new legs immediately. Gangster! Five thousand a leg on F Street. I can't even hold the phone with my right hand. I can still sock it oh, on F Street. They gotta transport me by myself. Gangster. With extra security. <laughs> on F Street, my <laughs> still work on flaming. You think I don't got G wagons and shit following me? I don't think y'all can see it yet. Nigga, there ain't no G-Wagon, boy. There ain't no damn G-Wagon. Nah, that might be. That might be. They treat you good, you feel me? Got the paramedics like, look at this fucking blackie. With Frosty even telling an audience of IG followers that him and his homie Darby had two guns on them when they were attacked, but they didn't get to them in time. All in the comments. I need to see FIP Darby. That's on the dead homies. We had two straps on this. It just didn't like Life had happened like that. We had two guns. Yeah, and we still. Damn, I, I would be sad as fuck if I man's died. 
While one English don't get sad. was recovering from a tragedy, another was angling to escalate the beef with Draco. On August the 19th, 2021, Munchie B, the blind OG from Inglewood, who appeared in the Hood vlog alongside Red Bull, would release a Draco diss song called The Truth Is The Truth, with the song's title being a play on the titles of Draco's mixtape series, which are all named after the truth in some way. On the song, Munchie B dissed Draco's brother Ralphie, saying that he stole his rap style from Frosty. He referenced Stink Team member Solo snitching during the Red Bull trial. He mocked Ketchy the Great for being hit by a car. He even disses Draco's young son, saying he's going to beat him up when he turns 18. A savage diss, but from here there would be much more musical activity coming from Inglewood. Oh, and this nigga was August, wild. The spread of an upcoming collaboration track between Inglewood affiliates AZ Chike and Rucci and Louisiana rap legend Lil Boosie. This would lead Draco to publicly diss Lil Boosie for making. Oh, these niggas was wildin'. Making He's probably gonna read it. AZ Chike, with Draco saying Boosie has been picking the wrong people to work with and that he's now lost all respect for him. Though in all fairness, Draco seemed to have been sneak dissing Boosie ever since he got out of jail. Yeah, I was, I, was I was about to say that. I was about to say that. Being a track called Lil Boosie, where Draco says that his charges topped Lil Boosie's murder charges. AZ Chike would respond saying that Draco was trying to blackball him from the rap game and suggesting that Boosie just doesn't care about his opinion. And Chike would later post a story mocking Draco, suggesting that Boosie would never care about his opinion. What y'all think that motive was like? I can see where he's coming from. Of telling Boosie you lost all respect for him. Was Boosie supposed to take his verse back? <laughs> was he supposed to be like, God darn it, Draco, you're right. <laughs> he's quote unquote losing respect for somebody he's never met a day in his life. They never he, 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 he's they making some valid points. He's making some valid points. We actually got a lot of mutuals. A whole lot of mutuals, bro. It's who just took a pick with him that I with. You don't see me saying I lost respect for them or none of that shit. And Boosie himself would even later commentate on the situation in a DJ Vlad interview, ultimately saying Draco's beefs have nothing to do with him and don't influence who he's going to collab with. Nah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. That's a... Uh, that's a rare Draco L. That's a rare Draco. I wouldn't even give it an L, but I understand why he's upset. But at the same time, you can't get upset over something like that. Like, come on, you can collab with Drake. Share, share the money on a little bit. Share the money on a little bit. His eh? anger about his ops getting a Boosie feature was minor in comparison to the explosion of beef he was about to release onto the LA rap scene. As on August the 20th, 2021, Draco previews a new song called Ingleweird on his IG line. One song dissing the entire city of Inglewood. And people were all in the comments telling Draco to shoot the music video in Inglewood if he's really that tough. Oh, that's, that's, that's crashing out. That would be crashing out. That. Shoot the video in Inglewood. Tough guy. Y'all know what's up. Oh, this uh, nigga, yo, like, you look at that. this nigga's oh, eyes. Draco would go on niggas activated again, the demon. When people from Inglewood diss him, their OGs tell them to chill out because they know he'll go there and do something crazy. Why you think when that bitch ass diss me was on that You know why they was on him? Yeah, they was on him because they like, yeah, he gonna come through here. Yeah, stop running your mouth because you ain't, you a... You don't gotta deal with that when it's come through here and get to be acting crazy. Draco would of course go on to diss Rucci and AZ Trike extensively, mainly focused on questioning their street credentials and financial stability. What street shit is Trike doing? Nah, wait. Nigga said you're chubby. <laughs> Nigga do got a little bit of weight on him. That's what that money on do. Nigga be eating, nah, eating money onions all day. Because wearing rags and videos don't, don't make you. Uh, street. How many how how many bodies this be? <laughs> I wait. <laughs> how many times did you even been to jail? <laughs> I wait. How did you went to jail for a traffic ticket? <laughs> Suspended license. Niggas right flexing here. being Billy Badass. Yeah, Only Draco could do that, bro. Oh, okay. This nigga's flexing being a menace. Never been to the county? Okay. Yeah. DA watching this mad as shit. Five thousand fifty. <laughs> yeah, fifty. <laughs> All right. What type of car drive? Okay. Do have cars? Mm. Okay. Before they pull up and slap one because you know what I really be on. That very same day, Draco goes live again, dissing his ops, saying they never went to jail like him, and saying again that they're too broke to have cars. Then it make a song. That's so crazy. Hit by cars and all type of shit, bro. Y'all didn't do that.
and a week later, on the 7th of September, Draco premieres the full-blown music video to his scathing diss track, Inglewood. And it's got bar after bar mocking the entire city of Inglewood, saying that he's going to turn the whole of California against Inglewood, and that he plans on tying up and hanging his ops. He says he'll turn the suburbs of... Should I react to that? Oh! <laughs> That seems spicy. Inglewood that just seems factory, spicy, which boy. I'm still not entirely sure what that means. Let me know in the comments if you know. It sounds bad. He calls Inglewood natives weenies. He says a lot of people in Inglewood are snitches. He disses Rootsie and calls him poor. He disses AZ Trike in numerous lyrics, including one where he questions why he would join a gang at 25 and saying that he'll hang him up like a coat as well as mocking AZ Trike and Rucci for still being cold in the music industry despite getting their feature from Lil Boosie. With this being a reference to the fact that their collab track Hoodrack still hasn't passed 400,000 views on YouTube. Draco also says on the song that he dropped 50 on a blind person, which seems to suggest that he was putting up money for a hit on oh, Inglewood member Mikey D. Oh, he ain't see it coming, that's so disrespectful. Line. Draco goes on to rap that his ops are as sweet as buttercups and that he'll turn their ass to Reese's pieces, with this being an apparent reference to a rumored prison incident which may or may not have happened involving munchy b some peanut butter and some pretty unpleasant things that i just don't even want to get into here there's no coming back from that oh oh no that's that's ridiculous that that's the most egregious thing i've ever read in my entire life these niggas are reckless these niggas are ruthless these oh no Oh no. Draco ends the oh, with no. one final dose of disrespect, saying Free Kells, a reference to that stink team member who was convicted of murdering Red Bull. That's now, crazy! That after all of the drama with Draco fighting the cops and prosecutors, even after beating his case, it's pretty likely that the cops were watching his every move. And I've got no doubt that after the song Inglewood released, the police would have been aware that Draco had just made a public declaration of war on everyone in Inglewood and were probably keeping a close eye on him. Yeah. And with that in mind, it's not massively yeah. surprising that only a day after Draco released Inglewood, he was arrested whilst riding in the back of an Uber. Draco would actually go live on Instagram whilst being pulled over by the police, with his son in the back of an Uber having a full-scale meltdown as to how the cops knew to target him in the back of a taxi. You're getting detained for 148, delaying my investigation. What is your investigation? I already told you, I have windows. I have an ID, and I need to identify you. He gave me his ID. You're not giving me your ID. Mind you, you you're not even supposed to be talking. Exactly, I got my seatbelt on. I know, but I'm asking you to. I'm back. Hmm? I'm out of the car. They pulled this nigga over while he's in a taxi? Put your hands up here. I'm on live. What are you talking about? I'm on live. Okay, I don't care about being on live. I'm on live, too. See this? LAPD got me on live, too. I'll take one. See that. You put the phone down. If you want to point the phone at me, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Uh, and he's that cop is black too, bro. He knows he know knows it, bro. Know. Niggas weird as fuck, bro. I hate the police. Uh, I hate the police. They pulled me over for my tent. I haven't liked them since. Over, bro, to pick up my son, bro. Literally. Five out of one. Have all units respond. North my Bell, son is in the Yeah, that nigga's hating, bro. This is crazy, bro. This is. The best thing he could probably done was get out the car, though. This is crazy, bro. I'm, so I'm asking you not to go in your pocket. I'm putting my phone in my pocket, bro. No, but I don't want you to go in your pocket. What are y'all on, bro? I'm not on anything. I'm not yelling and screaming or nothing. Like, you asked the Uber I'm driver, bro. Like, ID, and I asked you for your uh, ID. So I don't think he has to give it to him. He's in the back of an Uber. I would have gave it to him just to get him out of my face. I mean, unless you done, unless you got a warrant or some shit. You told me no. I didn't tell you, no, I said, what am I stepping out the car for? Because we have the right to pull you out of the car. Nah, that's not how that works. At first, you didn't right, have an ID. Go watch some Bruce River, ID. nigga. At first, you allegedly didn't have an ID, so I want to identify you. This shit is crazy, bro. Oh, this shit is crazy. What the f*** is going on? So I'm telling you right now, you're the one who's escalating right. this, and you're the one who's stating you have your kid in the car. I didn't want to do this that, in bro, you But you seen that, bro, but you seen it. You was behind me, bro. I can pull you over, your kid in the car or not. Talking about, bro. What the is going on? So, this is, this is where we're going to be at right now. My supervisor here, I'm going to tell you, my supervisor here, and then we got a couple more units in here. We're going to ask you one more time to step out, and if you say no, then we're going to do what we got to do to get this you. It's crazy. And then bro. I'm going to take you out, and then, and then I'm going to take you to jail. What the f is going on, bro? Things in there panicking. So what, 
Why are y'all pulling me? What did I do for y'all to put me? Y'all pulling over an Uber driver, bro. What is going on? What is the? What program? It's just ten. Bro, what are you talking about? Bro, what the fuck are you? This is crazy, bro. Let's do this the right way. What are what are we doing, bro? Why? What, what is going on, though? Exactly, bro. Why are y'all pulling me over? Driver, he bro. said that he pulled him over for tent windows. This is an Uber driver, bro. This has nothing to do. What is he talking about? They're doing this nigga the worst exactly. way. We'll explain. We'll explain everything. This Scandalous. Shit crazy, bro. Scandalous. This shit is crazy, bro. That's scandalous. Let's just make this real easy. You got a bunch of cops coming over here for nothing. Oh, man, I'm not going to get out of the car and we'll deal with this. What, what are we dealing with, bro? 9859. 9859. Little man, I'm going to take this kid out of the car, okay? What is going on, bro? Look. What is. Hey. Grab him first. We're going to get the Uber driver out first. Hey, go, go ahead and grab the kid. What the f is going on right now, bro? Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah you got to get out that car, big what bro. What is going on? He's in the seatbelt, Sark. What the f is going on right now? Come on, baby. This nigga life probably flashing before his eyes. What's your name? Huh? What's your name, sir? What's your name, bro? What's your name? Daryl. No, I don't, bro, but I don't understand why y'all doing this. I'm on live, bro. I'm on live, bro. I don't have nothing on me, bro. I'm on live, bro. What are y'all doing, bro? Oh, what are you talking about, bro? What are they patting him down for if it, if they just getting pulled over for window tent? What are y'all doing? I'm on live, bro. Hold up, bro. Hold up. What are y'all doing, bro? 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 Draco would later be seen being led away from the scene in handcuffs, being taken into custody with many speculating he'd been caught with another gun. Following this situation, Draco was taken- Why did they- why did they make this nigga get out the car for 10? I don't get that. And if he doesn't have no warrants, ah, that's the thing. That's what y'all gotta realize. Sometimes you can make it worse. I, I don't know if you have warrants or not. Well, if you're- if you're a felon, I think- is that the law? They're allowed to like make you pat you down and make you get out the car and all this other shit if you're a felon. I think that's what it was. I think that because in other cases, out, otherwise, why wouldn't he just give him his ID? That the ops are the ones snitching on him. How many times have you ever seen that before? Pulling over over. Pulling over over. That Ooh, was crazy. All they're going to do is tell him, I know. Man. After this, Draco would go live once again, suggesting that somebody from Inglewood had something to do with his arrest and saying that the ops are hoping that he gets beaten up in jail. And then he like, oh, yeah, well, then, then he, talking, he talking about me getting a book yesterday. He talking about some, yeah, well, maybe because he made that diss song uh, against the whole Inglewood. <laughs> like, like, the, like, like, there's a threat to me, bro. Like, what are you talking about, bro? He talking about, he talking about the police. He talking about, if I wasn't worried, you got smack. You think I'm worried about a diss song? Come on, bro. Well, man, it's and he said it's not always gonna be the same uh, as last time. And I know what people are saying. Oh yeah, man. Well, he was catching fades last time. Yeah, every time ain't the same. So if I was catching fades last, I so like, maybe it might be nice this time, bro. Yeah. Maybe how you bitch at? You talking about? Two or three. He's a yeah, troll, man. bro. May, 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 maybe say, maybe maybe since that you died, bro, and didn't want to fight me then. Maybe two or two or three might be bold enough to fight me then. You hear that? Snitch ass. Getting Ubers pulled over. Damn. Sadly, it was this moment when fans began to get concerned about Draco. A post on the subreddit Cali Banging, Reddit's premier community discussing California gang politics, saw a fan pondering Draco's toxic personality, suggesting this might be the reason that he's not going to make it out alive. 
pointing out that more people like Draco than he even thinks in LA, but implying that he is sabotaging his own career by leaning into gang beefs when he should be focusing on his you career can make the case, bro. the industry boost that comes with working with a mainstream artist like Drake. Some suggested in the comments that perhaps it was Draco's lean addiction or PTSD from solitary confinement Baby that had been clouding his judgment recently, with some going as far as to say that if Draco continues down this path, he's unlikely to see 2022. With hindsight, it's clear to see just how right these fans were. Draco essentially signed his own death certificate when he released Ingleweird, but perhaps he just couldn't see it through the muddy puddles of lean clouding his judgment. Naturally, a response to the song would be coming from Inglewood. Thankfully, this begun with back and forths in music rather than violence. That's how it should stay. Taking to Instagram Live on August the 25th, revealing his new Draco diss song, Lil Stink Stink, with Draco raiding the chat <laughs> <on the laughs> personally stink, stink. to mock and threaten AZ Chike. Draco said people get smacked for speaking on the stink team. He said Chike's own homies are warning him not to drop the song. He called the track garbage. He suggested that he had sent a request to join the live, which Chike had ignored and just let sit there, and leaving one final ominous comment saying everybody from Inglewood gets killed anyway. It's no wonder that the track got under Draco's skin, when the song itself included sampled audio of Draco being arrested in that Uber only days before. In response to the track, Stinky member Money Monk apparently pulled up to AZ Trike's house looking for a fight. Trike, where you at, bitch? Uh, I'm at your house. And it's your house, Trike? Where you at? Huh, where you at? Okay, check, Trike. All right, get in this mother. Come outside and play, bitch. I'm gonna see your parking lot for like 20 minutes, Mark ass. Course Hero is an AI-powered learning platform that's a game changer. Draco would continue. They was pulling up to the parking lot's crazy. On August the 27th, he posted up on IG, wearing sunglasses and pretending to be blind, saying that he's doing the Munchy B challenge. He's a troll. Draco's he's a troll. Pieces had redditors convinced that he would be dead soon unless somebody stepped in and talked some sense to him. But since Ingleweird, the line had been crossed, and there really did appear to be no turning back for the Stink Team now. On September the 8th, Jeez. 2021, Money Monk would go on to drop the song Peanut Butter Booty Pack, a scathing Munchy B diss, once again referring to that peanut. I gotta react to that. I gotta react to that. Y'all let me know if that's a good... Oh, God damn, I just bit my tongue. Y'all let me know if that's a good song or not. Butter incident. Let me know if that's that a good song September or not. On the 16th, 2021, Draco pulled up for an interview on No Jumper once again, this time speaking incredibly recklessly. He opens up by saying that he is a completely different person to who he was in the last interview, suggesting that in the last interview with No Jumper, he was fresh out of solitary confinement and still suffering mental health challenges, saying that now after some recovery time, he's a cocky millionaire ready to hurt his ops feet. Feelings. See, I'm myself now, so it might be a little. So you, this interview is different. Now. You were saying the last time you were here, you I was were, fresh out of jail, bro. I just, different just version fucking, of yourself. Like, yeah, bro. I was just fucking side thinking about like fucking almost thirty months, bro. Like the, it's different now, though. I'm a millionaire now. It's kind of different. Yeah, <laughs> that money ought to do that to you. I think that's what they're mad about. Yeah, that money ought to do that to you. When I was in jail, same way they was laughing when I was getting booked by the police. In the interview, Draco would also reveal that he was once again booked for possession of a firearm by a felon after being arrested in that Uber. But they didn't press any charges on you or anything? Uh, no, yeah, they, they said... Uh, oh, wait, they said they found a gun. Felon with a firearm or something. Because you know Draco got, got it on him. ...the Munchie B peanut butter incident once again, all while very diplomatic co-host AD tried to avoid saying anything that would escalate things, giving Adam22 a strong eye to try and get him to move on to another topic, all while Draco was warning that the ops are going to be after Adam next. Did you see the part where... Uh, About the peanut butter? Where, no. Peanut butter? My bad. My bad. Who so got peanut butter? That's a whole other situation. Yeah, they might come for you after Adam. Street shit. Okay. Do that. Stay, stay away from me, Adam. I don't want to say nothing about peanut butter, whatever the f that is. What would you do if somebody put peanut butter in your ass? Oh my god. <sighs> well, it would oh really god. depend on the person. Yeah, all right, we just gonna end this. Thing. Okay. This nigga is a supreme level troll, bro. Just look at him. Just fucking look at him, bro. Like what? I'm not gonna touch on this, Adam, because if my girl wanted to do that, I mean, it is what it is. Stay, stay away from Adam. Okay. Leave it alone, bro. Jesus Christ. Right. This nigga knows. Know, he knows. knows. Hey, that's hey, that's, hey, that's good. Uh, you feel me? Gina's telling me not to engage <laughs> with this. I don't know what. Even it is. Gina She's knows. Like, stay out of hey, this. Even Adam. Gina knows. Hey. I look. I look, Adam. L.A. It's a complicated place. You know place. me, bro. I don't care. Like, and like, 
But Draco wasn't done clowning Munchie B or dragging Adam-22 unwillingly into LA gang politics as Draco proceeds to ask Adam what he would do if a blind person said they were after him. Hey, if, if somebody that can't see said that they was gonna like slide on you. Jeez, how this, that look at this, like, this nigga, bro. I'm just wondering, nigga, like, <laughs> how are you gonna like do anything if you're blind? You can't see, you can't even blind. drive. Oh, okay, no mind. Like bro, this nigga's terrible, bro. He's hell. Draco is hell, boy. Oh my here, god. A confused Adam says, but he often doesn't know exactly what people are talking about when they make inside references on his podcast. With Adam inferring that he didn't know what YG was talking about when he came on No Jumper and said that his crew are really gonna get his odds, with Draco clapping back and saying YG isn't really tough. Sometimes I feel like people are uh, talking in innuendo on my podcast and I'm kind of like <laughs> not in the loop. You are, you are. Remember the YG interview? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I didn't really like get no, that there I were coded that, though, messages like, in there that you would feel yeah. a way about. No, nah, it wasn't no coded messages because people are not like that, so it don't even matter. That's kind of like what you said. Yeah. Naturally, the conversation would eventually turn to Inglewood, with a newly cocky Draco the Ruler leaving nothing off the table. He started by saying that he has enemies that don't gangbang, but represent Inglewood and are united in hating him, ultimately saying that he will never resolve his issues with Inglewood. Damn. That don't gangbang, bang Inglewood like it's a gang. Like, Inglewood, and if you beef with anything over here, we're gonna have each other back. Well, I hope all that shit gets resolved. Never. And Draco goes on to say that his aren't really bro. killers, saying they don't own guns and their threats against him are not valid. Do not be like that, Adam. I'm telling you, bro. Like, Cause we be laughing and joking about the situation. Be like, I'ma kill you. Like, uh, you don't even own a gun. <laughs> and finally, Draco would end the interview by saying, "Free kills." You any last words? Yep. Free kills. Once again, not all of Drake's so fans were pleased at his latest appearance. Redditors on Cali Banging would come out to say they were annoyed at what they described as Draco's arrogant oh. god persona, with some pointing out that his ego had gotten out of control and saying that he finally got a second chance at life, beating his case, and yet now he's deciding to go straight back into the dark. <sighs> and those are some real fans right there too, because if you think about it, bro, the nigga did make it. Like he 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 realistically he did make it. Like he was really like you know when you beat GTA 5 and Franklin Clinton's up in the hills? He's up in Vinewood, he's up in the hills. That's like Franklin Clinton going back down to Grove Street and just, and just going one on 5,000 with the ballers. Like, it's just not worth it, bro. It's not worth it. And that, ah. LA gang politics. These are statements that would- I wouldn't say he's acting like a street like god, but this is, this is somewhat crashing out. would end in tragedy. But at this point, the wheels were in motion and Draco's path into one of the most dangerous situations that the gang lifestyle has to offer would now be unstoppable. A few days after his no jumper appearance on September the 19th, 2021, Draco would speak again in an IG story saying that the bloods actually like him apart from the ones in Inglewood. Oh, uh, bless me. Mm, Northern Cali bloods. Let me let me scratch that. South Central bloods, Compton bloods, Pasadena bloods, San Diego bloods, Bakersfield bloods, Northern Cali bloods, Stockton bloods, Sacramento bloods. Just one group of individuals who don't the like. Ang you. Englewood they didn't fuck with Draco. Crazy, ain't it? And a few days after that, on September the 22nd, Munchie B drops another diss track called Last Lap, dissing both Draco and Nipsey Hussle, whose mural was vandalized by Capone. Eventually, more of Draco's enemies would come out to dispute things he'd said. AZ Trike addressed Draco claiming that he'd joined the gang at 25 in an Innovators interview. What can I gain from joining a gang at 25 that I already got right now. Trike would go on to say that Draco has issues with his homies, not him, but it wouldn't be realistic to be cool with Draco considering the history with Englewood. There is some problems he got going on with the homies and they got nothing to do with me. And that's why he mad because I put him and I'm loyal to him. In conclusion, Trike would say that he believes that Draco is simply hating on them. It ain't no beef. This a bitch and he be hating like it's weird the day after that dropped draco would continue putting his pressure on inglewood posting a document purporting to be proof that frosty had snitched then on october the 14th 2021 ruchi and az trike pull up to no jumper for their own interview with ruchi mocking draco for making the song Ingleweird, a song all about dissing az trike when trike isn't actually from inglewood originally the song oh. called Ingleweird <laughs> is about him Hmm. He's not from Inglewood. They would go on to say that everybody in the Stink team sucks at rapping, apart from Ketchup oh, and Draco, who that's, they say oh, is oh. hanging on by a thread. It ain't rapping, 
can't rap. Well, there's only one over there that can rap. Who and he hanging with? on by who, a straight. Who you over there? <laughs> little fat boy, little fat girl, he's straight. Like, you know what I'm saying? He do his thing. It was called a little time. fat boy? Oh, other over there that was really greasy, very talented. Like, I wish I was paying attention, bro. I wish I knew about this shit when it was really lit. Like, obviously, like, I wish Draco didn't pass, but I wish I was like, you know, when this interview first dropped, I probably would have been laughing at this shit. He called a little fat boy? Like, that's crazy. RP was catchy. Troik also appeared in a bootleg Kev interview, saying Draco is simply mad that him and Rucci's careers heated up, and saying that he's only mad because they turned him down for a feature whilst he was still in jail. What the hell happened with Draco the ruler? Because don't you guys have mutual people involved in each of y'all situations. So mm -hmm. where where did things go left? He don't like that we hot. When I was in jail, though. He wanted to on there, though. I told him no. Because I think it would. And... Ooh. My city, I'm from Inglewood. We don't get along, bro, at the whole. You feel what I'm saying? So, oh, you just doing that because you with them. Nah, it's the homie being loyal, bro. Right. You feel me? But Ooh. they keep hating and keep saying something about it. So it's like, we got to give them a little attention. Ultimately claiming not to be happy about the Inglewood song and saying it sucks. What'd you think of it, like as a song? That shit was not tight. I gotta react to that. Yeah. I gotta react to that. It would've been better. Honestly. Yeah, I felt the beat was hard as You know, it didn't sound threatening. Like, <coughs> nah. At this point, a whole lot of tension had brewed between the Stink team and Inglewood. And it really was just a matter of time until the two groups bumped into each other and things boiled over. But for now, Draco and the Stink team would be more focused on music and money. Spending time performing on their Long Live the Great tour, dedicated to the memory of Ketchy the Great through September That's lit. and October, That's lit. with Draco eventually playing a big December 12th show on the bill for LA's Rolling Loud Festival. This was a big opportunity for Draco to perform in front of a crowd of tens of thousands of fans. It must have been an enormous moment for Draco's career. To have beaten the death penalty in a life sentence, he got that silk going too, boy. The trauma of years in solitary confinement and building up your rap career to the point where you've got thousands of adoring fans screaming his lyrics at the top of their lungs. Getting to this point was an incredible achievement for Drake. That's lit. It's nothing short of amazing. But the sad fact is, this show would be the last one that Draco would ever play. Here's one thing you need to do before buying anything online. Don't. As that feeling was probably so surreal for Cuz. All that fucking work that he done put in, all that time he done spent in jail, solitary confinement. Now he got a, he's at Rolling Loud, bro. That's like the biggest, that's like the biggest stage you could really be on. Like that's, damn boy, we have to, we have the decline of the show now. 2021, Draco was set to perform his next show at the Once Upon a Time in LA Music Festival. He arrived to the venue in his iconic Rolls Royce Dawn and an incredibly small entourage who were meticulously searched and stripped of any weapons upon arrival at the venue. Draco had apparently been given a maximum of 15 wristbands for his entourage, which in the end only stood six people strong, plus just one lone security guard. It was around 8.30 p.m. when things went left. Draco, Ralphie, and others engaged in a scuffle as apparently somebody in the distance shouted fuck the stink team, fuck Draco, with the stink team immediately set to square up and squabble with their opposition. Draco, Ralphie, and others begin to engage in a scuffle, but what begins as a fair fight soon swells into a mob brawl as dozens more people appear to face off with the stink team in a fight. According to witnesses, the attackers are apparently blood members. The mob of attackers mostly wearing red descend no. on the stink team apparently hollering the famous blood chant, Su Wu. No! This was later described as being around 40 to 60 people strong, having the stink team only six men strong massively outnumbered. With individuals at the scene notably being seen wearing 400 merch, the record and clothing label of blood rapper YG, who had allegedly arrived at the venue with his entourage shortly before this scuffle broke out. No! The would later surface online, which despite being very chaotic, if slowed down and observed carefully, does appear to show the moment when Draco the ruler is stabbed. These clips are far too violent to show you on YouTube, but if you want to see a full frame by frame breakdown of what happened in the footage, you can see that on my Patreon. Slow motion footage circulating after the incident breaks down this short- Hold on, let me go watch it. I'll be right back. Shit's heavy out there, bro. Shit's heavy, bro. Them niggas stood 10 toes. It, it, yeah, you can't take that away from him, bro. Them niggas was about what they rapped about, bro. He stood 10 toes, bro, but come on, bro. You can't. That's like you you and your, your other three trash Fortnite friends versus fucking... I only called your friends trash because I know you're not good at Fortnite. But um, 
It's like you niggas versus fucking the whole Battle Royale lobby, bro. That's 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 crazy, bro. 20 seconds of fight footage in that's crazy. Detail. Before the stabbing takes place, you can actually see somebody in a black ski mask being handed an object that looks like a knife. As the and how they get on, the knife Draco's in? Draco's outnumbered crew are rushed back by the mob of bloods and separated from Draco. At this point, the individual who was earlier handed an object appears to swing a knife at Draco, with Draco putting out an open hand to block the blade. His use of an open palm to protect himself is notable because it suggests that he could see a blade coming towards him rather than a fist, which would have elicited a closed knuckle guard. From here, the camera pans to the right, and we don't see Draco being stabbed directly. However, from the audio, it appears yeah, that he's shouting he has a knife, as we see what appears to be stink team members fleeing through a nearby gate as they run, Niggas ran? Like somebody says we got him perhaps a sign that the fatal stab to draco's neck had just been administered and while nothing more we of this got him. Was seen in the clip later more footage would emerge seeming to show draco the ruler receiving medical attention as he lays on the ground bleeding from his neck Draco would be transported from the venue to the hospital in critical condition, sadly being pronounced dead as a result of his stab wounds around midnight, roughly four hours after the altercation. Chaos at a packed concert featuring rap legends like Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube. A person was stabbed and police have shut down the show. Well, a man is reported dead after a being stabbed at a Damn, concert in bro. Park last night. Damn, TMZ bro. Is reporting the victim was rapper Draco, the ruler. It happened around 8.30 last night during the <sighs> Once Upon a Time in L.A. Music Festival being held at the Bank of California Stadium. That's sad as fuck, bruh. Draco's family and friends were left heartbroken after his tragic passing, as were the wider hip-hop community. The godfather of LA rap Snoop Dogg mourned the city's loss and described leaving the festival grounds as soon as he heard what had happened to Draco, choosing not to perform. Tory Lanez would come out to say that there will never be another artist like Draco, and Drake would remember how Draco had always lifted up his spirit with his energy. Draco's brother Ralphie would share an eerie story of his own, saying only two days ago, Draco had rapped a lyric about God saving a bed for him because he's coming soon. Meanwhile, despite being upset, many of Draco's fans over on Reddit's Cali Banging were hardly surprised at his passing, with one commenter saying that Draco had been manifesting his own death with his own behavior ever since he'd gotten out of That jail. manifestation shit's drugs, real, ego, boy. Untreated PTSD, combined with a never-ending tendency to provoke his ops. And Damn. keeping nothing but yes men around him ultimately meant that Draco's death was inevitable. But while Draco's friends and fans were mourning, looking for answers, Draco's op- Ah, you can- Ah, fuck. I'm not gonna sit here and say his boys was yes men, but it does. And I'm not gonna say he didn't have one of these kind of people in his corner, but at the same time, I already know, bro, like, once niggas make their money on, you got to get up out your hometown, bro. That's just how that shit works. Once you make your money on, you, you got to get up out your hometown, your home state, because that's where you that's where you're the least safest. You like you think you'd be the most safe there. You think you'd get the most love there, but that's where the most haters be, bro. And and I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not going to say, like, nah. Moral of the story, bro, is you, you just got to watch what you say, bro, because words have power, bro, and... Should be like that, bro. Would naturally be Long live the ruler, bro. Media. Many were turning his provocative lyrics and catchphrases against him, posting pictures of Draco with captions like, he's never coming back and that's that. As well that's as the fucking the crazy. On Draco and not shooting back. Of course, Draco's top op Munchie B tweeted for Draco to rest in piss, later posing on Instagram with a knife, mocking Draco for being stabbed in the neck. Stabbed him in the neck, you wanna take it, dear? And Munchie B would go on to remix Draco's Ingleweird, combining his diss song with footage of Draco dying. And going on to put up a story pointing out that both Draco and oh, Nipsey Hussle he's both spoke on his name man. in a disrespectful manner and both died slowly. It's no wonder that Munchie B was happy about Draco's passing, considering his close friendship with Red he was and just how disrespectful Draco had been to Munchie in some of his songs. Yeah. Sadly for Draco, the man who famously rapped that fights don't matter would end up outnumbered and unarmed in a fight that would ultimately take his life. It's a sad ending that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And while fans all over LA and the world mourn the loss of an incredible artist, that sadness would pale in comparison to what Draco's family were going through at the time. Draco's mother vowed to sue Live Nation, citing negligence from the venue. Yeah, because how the fuck they get the how they get the knife start, in? Explaining in an interview with Rolling Stone that a large number of people arrived at the venue at the same time as YG, whilst Draco and Ralphie were rolling with a very small crew. She said that 40 to 60 people jumped the stink team in a matter of seconds, leaving Ralphie overwhelmed and unable to protect Draco, who was left stabbed. 
ultimately concluding that while it was the killer that had the ill intention to take Draco's life, Draco's mother believes that the festival organisers should bear some responsibility for what happened backstage at their event, suggesting that she was pushing ahead with a lawsuit against Live Nation. Live Nation may very well bear some of the blame regarding the circumstances that caused Draco to lose his life that day. But ultimately, the true responsibility lies with the killer who swung the knife and inflicted a fatal blow on Draco's neck during that fight. Following the announcement of Draco's death, the police apparently had zero suspects, but that doesn't mean that the streets weren't talking. As Draco and Stink Team affiliate K7 would go live to the world saying that he believed that YG and his crew were responsible for Draco's death and blaming his security for providing the murder weapon. I'm, I'm speaking facts, bro. YG a real life bitch. Bro, I'm so mad, bro. My mama, bro. YG did some whole shit, bro. And if I see cut, I'ma slap the shit up. We fighting big ass security. You got those security guards fighting. Come on, bro. That shit ain't cool, bro. Oh, my mama, bro. Them got the big ass ball security guard snuck in, it, snuck in knives, all type of. Oh. Shit. oh. He told us we only can bring 15 people. Oh. No, bring 15 people, but let the bring a hundred month people, bro. YG can't perform in LA no more, bro. Hey, bro. YG a real bitch, cuz. Cause he knew Draco was gonna take his spot, cuz. Really a Set the whole shit up, bro. This shit was set up from the start, bro. Bro, these is ready for war, bro. That's not that Why much of a hey. That's LA. honestly, bro. that's honestly not that much of a stretch. That that's very ah. Came in as soon as he came, it went bad basically. Like, like know what they was doing, bro. Ultimately, at this time, Damn. it's unclear exactly who was responsible for Draco the Ruler's murder. His death was a huge loss for the LA music scene. His unique style and outspoken personality made him one of the most impactful artists to come out of the city over the last decade. But the real truth is that Draco was moving reckless and risking his life with his zero fucks given attitude to the LA gang scene. He was, he, he was. His innocence for around three years during the Red Bull case, fighting the death penalty in earnest. An innocent man being persecuted for his associations and mere friendships with the real killer. Damn. The rally behind Draco this shit's a movie. After a long wait, hey, this shit's a movie. Which in a way makes it so much more disappointing that after beating that case, he would come out and act so recklessly, using his music to prod and mock the surviving friends of the murdered man. Draco was competitive to a fault. It seems that he was unable to let anybody else in his city shine because he was just too focused on beefing his ox to the bitter end. And when Draco decided to wage war on the entire city of Inglewood, it was really hard to see any outcome other than him getting hurt or killed. Draco sounded invincible when he rapped, but the reality <laughs> is anybody can get caught slipping if they let their guard down. And in the case of Draco the Ruler, when that day came, he went out fighting and standing on everything he said. He Going did. As a legend of the rap game who truly lived and died by every word he said on the beat. Rest in peace, Draco the Ruler. And I hope you enjoyed that video. The fucking goat, nigga. Oh my god. Damn, bro. That's sad as fuck, bro. That is sad as fuck, bro. Listen, this nigga's one of one, bro. He's one of one, bro. He's the fucking goat. He's the fucking goat, bro. I, I gotta I gotta go react to some more Draco now. I got to, bro. I'm glad y'all requested this. Hey, man, look. Shout out to the 1K. Shout out to all my new subs. Listen, bro, we up next. Unlimited crew, we up next. Feel me? It's peace, love, all of the above. Prayers for all y'all, bro. I hope y'all had a great day. I hope y'all have an even better day. Uh, Yeah, bro. I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out of here.